Elite Facts presents Nine Origins of Words and Phrases. Nine. Abracadabra Alakazam. No doubt you've heard the words Abracadabra Alakazam uttered in relation to magic. You probably recognize it as the incantation uttered as magicians perform their magic and cast their spells. It often appears in magic-related popular culture in some form, like for example the line of psychic Pokemon, or Harry Potter's similar-sounding killing curse, Avada Kedvara. The abracadabra part likely has rather straightforward but ancient origins and is likely derived from the very similar Aramaic and Old Hebrew languages where it meant roughly, it came to pass as I speak or I create as I speak. It's likely that Harry Potter's killing curse similarly meant let it be destroyed as I speak. Some, however, believe it may relate to the word abraxas from the ancient Greek Gnostic belief system where it was considered a word of power. The alakazam part has so far only been traced back as far as the early 20th century, and it's therefore harder to determine its exact origin. There was a suggestion that it meant what was said has come to pass in Aramaic, but the current mainstream theory is that it is simply a nonsense word, probably intended as a flourish of gibberish at the end of the incantation. 8. Chauvinist When you hear this word used today, you often hear it used to describe sexist men who are all too keen to throw shade at women for being inferior to them. This modern usage of the word has simply come to describe those who believe in the superiority of their own sex over the other. Language, of course, can evolve, and chauvinism or chauvinist is one example of a word that's usage has changed over time. The term originally comes from France during the early 19th century and means one who is overly patriotic, perhaps laughably so, with a belligerent belief in national pride and glory. A regular patriot may express their views with a quiet pride, but a chauvinist would be more likely to jump up on a table, wave a flag, and shout about how great their country is. This is because Nicholas Chauvin, from whose name we get the word, was a decorated soldier in Napoleon's army who was famed for his love and pride in France's achievements under Napoleon. After Napoleon's defeat and banishment, Chauvin's excessive enthusiasm became derided by the people of the new restoration France. It is questionable, however, whether Chauvin actually existed. He may have just been a legend that embedded itself into the French psyche. But either way, his character left an impact on the world, and it's still felt in the language we use today. 7. Loophole Have you ever been playing a game and found yourself trying to bend the rules to your advantage or reading a contract through and trying to exploit some ambiguity in it that gives you a way around the terms? If you have, then you might think yourself quite smart and cunning, then realize why no one wants to play Monopoly with you anymore. But there is a good chance you would describe what you were doing as searching for a loophole in the rules. Now, you might find yourself wondering why these exploitable ambiguities are called loopholes. It is, after all, an odd sort of name for them. We can understand it being kind of like a hole in a law, but the loop bit makes no sense. The word loophole actually comes from the ages of castles and refers to the thin arrow slits in the fortification's walls. The word loophole gets used in legal terminology because what we consider to be loopholes usually contravene the intent of law without actually breaking it. This is much like the arrow slits in castles, which seem like they should be points of weakness in the walls, but they are constructed in such a way that arrows may be safely loosed out through them without the risk of any projectiles making their way in through them and at the archer. 6. Pipe Dreams if I were to tell you that in 15 years' time I'll be the king of YouTube, own a gold-plated Lamborghini, and have my own personal jetpack with a built-in home cinema system, you would probably accuse me of having pipe dreams. But why exactly is it called a pipe dream? We use it to describe unrealistic ambitions and fantasies, and of course, this phrase has nothing to do with plumbing or industrial-grade plastic tubing. The origin of the term pipe dream should be pretty obvious to some. How could pipes possibly be related to fantastical dreaming? Hmm, I wonder. Well, the answer is, of course, hallucinations brought on by smoking opium. Back in Victorian times, the intellectual elite of Great Britain developed a taste for opium, so it would not have been unusual to find famous authors like Samuel Taylor Coleridge zonked out high on the stuff in a back alley den somewhere in London. The British opium habit found its way into literature of the time with references to it being made in Alice in Wonderland and a Sherlock Holmes novel. 
Though the British popularized opium, one of the earliest uses of the term pipe dreams in its current sense is actually attributed to the American publication The Chicago Daily Tribune in 1890. Who knows, perhaps in 20 years' time we'll all have robot servants and the YouTube comments section will be a friendly welcoming place. Or maybe those are just more opium-induced hallucinations. 5. Hooligan Hooligan and hooliganism are words that conjure images of rowdy soccer fans drinking, singing lewd chants, and quite possibly rioting, trashing the place, and punching horses. Often, hooligan is simply a word associated with unlawful and disruptive behavior. This word obviously has negative connotations, and while it serves a useful purpose in denoting the sorts of people who give sports fans a bad name, in its early stage it was a racial slur of sorts. Because of a particularly wild and violent family of Irish immigrants called the Hoolahans in late 19th century London, the word not only earned its negative connotations of disruptive rowdy behavior, but also an association with Irishness. Entering usage via newspapers and police reports in 1898, the word served for a time as a derogatory term for the Irish and the stereotyped behaviors of drunkenness and brawling in public. 4. Bang for your buck it's funny, in a dark sort of way, just how much this turn of phrase actually has to do with bangs. You might think it has quite sordid origins, coined by sailors discussing what they get up to on shore leave, but the truth is actually way more destructive in nature. Usually, we use the phrase bang for your buck to suggest something is a good value for the money, and its origins actually have it meaning much the same, only in a way that will have you thankful it never got taken so literally. During the presidency of Dwight D. Eisenhower in the 1950s, there came discussion of a new policy towards military spending called the New Look Policy. This policy called for the U.S. military to increase its number of nuclear weapons in order to keep the Soviet Union in check and cut the overall number of troops. This would mean the U.S. had more firepower for their tax dollars, which was surmised as bigger bang for the buck in 1954 by U.S. Secretary of Defense Charles Irwin Wilson. It has been suggested that Wilson perhaps took inspiration from an advertising slogan by Pepsi that said, more bounce for the ounce. So the next time you think that a six-pack of beer for $6.99 is a good bang for your buck, perhaps you should instead stop and consider whether or not the $84 or thereabouts that each U.S. citizen paid last year towards upgrading the government's nuclear arsenal was good bang for your buck. 3. Swashbuckle how does one buckle a swash? Does it have something to do with waving a belt buckle about in a swashing motion? Why is it that this odd sort of word is applied to many of the archetypical adventure heroes? Usually, the word conjures up dashing heroes like the Three Musketeers or some noble pirate like Will Turner fencing their way through hordes of villains with grace and ease. This is not actually necessarily incorrect with regards to the word's original meaning, but most portrayals of a swashbuckler in books and movies leave out 50% of what the word actually refers to. The swash part of swashbuckle refers to a sword, with swash archaically meaning to swagger with a drawn sword, and can be thought of as an onomatopoeia, referring to the noise a sword makes when cutting through the air. Swashbuckling adventures in movies and on TV get this part right, usually. But historically, the term came about to describe the style of fencing developed for the side sword and buckler, and that's the bit that gets left out, the buckler. The buckler was a type of small round shield gripped with the fist that were often used in training or by civilians for personal defense. They were small enough that they could be carried on the hip of a civilian and were much quicker and easier to carry than a large battlefield shield. The daring nature associated with swashbuckling probably came about because use of this fighting style usually meant no armor, a lot of skill, and some serious bravery. So yes, you can buckle a swash. You catch a sword with your buckler. If you then swash to buckle, you probably need to work on your sword play. 2. Villain since we've established the origins of the swashbuckling hero, it might surprise you to learn that the word villain has even humbler origins. Villain probably evokes the mustache-twiddling, hand-arching, scheming bad guy image. The crook, the antagonist, the general nasty-pants person who makes life a misery for others. Villain's current usage can perhaps be interpreted as a classist slur, suggesting that poor people are wicked criminals. This is because the word was originally the Anglo-French word vilain, which referred to someone bound to a villa. 
This class of people were essentially farmhands stuck working the fields and plantations of whoever owned the estate and were pretty poor as a result. Because of this, it's possible some of them may have done some less than reputable things to earn a little bit extra something on the side. From this word came a new word, villein, which simply referred to someone of less than knightly status prone to committing unchivalrous acts. This started to be used as a derogatory term and evolved into the modern word villain, which we use today in much the same way. 1. Dictator The aforementioned villainous characteristics are what you might associate with the stereotypical image of a dictator. Dressed in lavish military attire and exerting self-serving control over a country and its people, the picture painted of a dictator is most definitely a negative one. In modern times, there have been a number of world leaders who have risen and fallen who have been called dictators, and there are still quite a few holding power today. In the most basic sense of the word, a dictator is someone who rules with absolute power. This has really always been the case, though the word has classical origins devoid of any negative connotations, going all the way back to the Roman Republic. In the Roman Republic, a dictator was a magistrate given sole power to rule for a limited time, usually during a time of crisis. A historic example would be Fabius Maximus, who held the position of dictator during the Second Punic War, being appointed to the position after the Roman defeat at Lake Trasimene at the hands of Hannibal of Carthage. Hannibal's victory meant he directly threatened the city of Rome, and the experienced and wise Fabius was appointed to calm Rome and meet Hannibal's challenge, which he did, delaying and distracting Hannibal long enough for Rome to recover. The role of dictator began to take on its more negative connotations when, in 81 BC, Roman general Cornelius Sulla assumed the role by force and ruled with a take-no-crap attitude, though only briefly before resigning. Dictator would come closer to embodying the word as we know it today when, in 44 BC, Julius Caesar also claimed the position by force and declared himself dictator in perpetuity and started the tradition of autocracy that would be picked up by his adopted son Octavian and subsequent emperors. Don't forget to like us and subscribe for more Elite Facts.